What do EV chargers, electric forklifts, and battery storage systems have in common? If you said a movement toward a greener world, you would not be wrong. Another thing that all of these applications have in common is the need for a DC contactor. If you need to manage the flow of electrical current in any of these applications or any other high power applications like solar inverters or warehouse automation designs, an electromechanical switch that is specifically designed to manage that flow of electrical current is the best way to go. All right, well, let's dig into the details about DC contactors, shall we? Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. In this episode of Chalk Talk, John Hamilton from TE Connectivity and I chat about the what, where, and how of DC contactors. We also explore the benefits that these solutions can bring to a variety of e-mobility, warehouse automation, and battery management applications, and how you can get started using a TE Connectivity ECK DC contactor in your next design. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from TE Connectivity. Hi, John. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you as well. Okay, so John, we're talking about TE Connectivity's ECK series DC contactors today. But first, John, what exactly is a DC contactor? Sure, yeah, we want to set the stage in the background here. So a DC contactor is an electromechanical switch specifically designed to manage the flow of electrical current in high power applications does comprise of several components. Those would be a coil, then the contacts, and then a protective enclosure, which you will see as the physical item. When the coil is activated, it creates a magnetic field that pulls the contacts together, thus closing the circuit, and then enabling the current to flow to the load, which the customer is switching. Okay, so John, how does a contactor differ from a relay? There are both similarities and differences. The main difference is that while DC contactors share similar construction principles, they are optimized and designed for high power applications through design choices. These features on DC contactors include larger contacts, better materials, more effective arc suppression, and stronger mechanical construction. Within TE, we do have both relays and contactors in our portfolio. You'll see some of these in the pictures. But when we know to use a DC contactor, that's given by when you're opening or closing a circuit that deals with direct current and higher power requirements, a DC contactor is definitely the right choice. Now, we're briefly going to talk about typical applications in the markets that are a good fit for DC contactors. Within TE, we use this term called new energy. And what we mean by this is it's several different aspects within these applications. And it's energy, whether it's wind power or solar power, that it's when that energy is generated. We work with customers at that point, and then also through the power transmission phases. So then when substations are involved, and then we also work with customers at the power consumption phase. So this is where we get into a little bit of the battery energy storage systems, which we refer to as BES, and also the EV charging stations. And this is where power consumed, you know, by you and I that we see either in our homes or commercial applications. So we're focusing on the battery energy storage systems, the EV charging infrastructure, as well as warehouse automation for electric forklifts, and also two other applications, which are called AGVs, also known as Autonomous Guided Vehicles, and AMRs, Autonomous Mobile Robots, as well. All right, so let's talk about those applications. What kind of applications would contactors be a good fit for? Yeah, our contactors are a good fit for battery energy storage systems to begin with here. And there are several components within battery energy storage systems, solar inverters, which helps take the DC power from solar panels and converts that into AC. Then we have power conversion systems, which when you have a bank of batteries, 
this power conversion system helps to transfer that DC energy into AC transmittable energy. And then we also have battery management systems as part of a subsystem in here as well. And that's more, there are board level components, but it helps provide the most optimal use of the energy stored in the batteries. And you'll see definitely these are a good fit for the contactors. There's also other TE content here that you'll see maybe resistors, filters, and switches, but we're definitely featuring the contactors here today. So, John, these contactors would also be a good fit for EV charging solutions as well, right? Correct. And this is where you'll see the level three here in the U.S., the level three EV charging stations. Typically, you know, anywhere from 24 kilowatts to 150 kilowatts. And there's definitely higher designs being done as well by engineers. But that's where you'll typically see our ECK contactors You'll see some pictures here we're featuring with the cabinet open in conjunction with usually bus bars on the application as well. So where do these ECK contactors fit into the overall TE contactors portfolio? Our ECK series of DC contactors are featured within our industrial business unit within TE. TE has several different business units within our organization, industrial, we also have what we call our Aerospace Defense and Marine Business Unit, also shortly known as ADNM. Then contactors are also featured in our Automotive Business Unit, as well as our Industrial Commercial Transportation Business Unit. And each contactor series fits in the application and market within that business unit. So within industrial, we're focused on the infrastructure side. So the EV charging stations, the battery energy storage systems, our automotive group has contactors for on-vehicle applications, where we in industrial focus off-vehicle, our automotive business unit focuses on-vehicle. And then contactors within aerospace, defense, and marine, they fit those applications, more rugged standards that you don't necessarily see with an industrial. And then ICT, industrial commercial transportation, also has contactors more for on-vehicle applications as well. So within industrial, the ECK features off-vehicle, and infrastructure applications. Okay, so can we dig into the details of the ECK series? Sure. We're showing here a quick roadmap of what we've developed and launched over the past two to three years. You can see we've started with what we call our polarized version, which is our ECK 150, 200, and 250 series. Typically, the numbers correspond with the switching currents, so 150 amps, 200 amps, and 250 amps. And now we've recently launched our bi-directional versions. So those come with a B at the end, ECK 150B, 200B, and 250B. Same form factor, just with the bi-directional contact capabilities for both charging to the vehicle and then vehicle back to the grid. I'll talk more about that in a minute. And then one of our recent launches is our ECK 50B and 100B series. This is our newest and our smallest version in the series just a few months back. So, John, what kind of applications are you seeing these ECK contactors being designed into? Sure. And we've talked briefly at a high level, but going into more details here, EV charging stations for level three, we see our ECK contactors being used for main switch applications also power distribution units, and you'll also see the vehicle to grid standard there, the UL9741. And then within battery energy storage systems, they can also be used for main switch applications. Contactors can be used in both commercial and residential applications and also data centers as well. And in the e-forklift applications and AGV autonomous guided vehicle applications that can be used for the main switches for the battery, and there are also power distribution units there too, as well in e-forklifts. And within solar inverters, again, they can be used for main switch applications. There's also power disconnect and even circuits for the AC conversion as well. So what kind of specifications are we looking at for this series? Yeah, there's several technical specifications. I'll go into a little more detail here. First, we'll start with the ECK 150, 200, and 250 versions. Again, we have both the polarized and bidirectional versions here. I'm talking about both of these within the same series. They are 
all hermetically sealed with ceramic technology. On the coil, we have built-in pulse width modulation, also known as PWM, on the economizer, which provides a lower hold power, only 1.7 watts, as opposed to the starting power to engage the contacts. There are optional auxiliary contact features. This helps engineers monitor the contact state through the life of the contactor. We do have both the polarized and bidirectional types here. We are compatible with common market layouts. So for panel hole sizes, we have the same mechanical dimensions. So it's a common footprint. We do comply with the DC-1 utilization category, and we meet certifications for multiple approvals. We have UL certification, CE, TUV, and CCC. So this is very much a global solution, uh, UL being driven here in the Americas, uh, TUV typically in Europe, and then CCC for the Asia market as well. So engineers who are, you know, whether it's consumed here in the Americas or, you know, maybe being designed in the Americas or different regions, definitely have a global solution here. Switching up to 1,000 volts DC, switching current up to 250 amps in this particular version, carrying up to 500 amps DC, and then typical applications like we've all already talked about, you know, EV charging, warehouse automation, and battery energy storage systems. And here's some quick snapshots from our data sheets. With each contactor part number, we have our ECK series data sheet that has a lot more technical features that will help engineers in their design and their applications. So a couple of these charts that are on our standard data sheets. On the left-hand side, we have our make and break switching curves. So this plots estimated number of cycles versus the load current, and you'll see the voltage there in the bold lines as well. So this is very helpful because engineers are typically trying to get to a certain number of cycles in their application, the life of the contactor. And this is a, an easy chart to be able to see what is expected compared to the voltage and current they're using at. We have test data behind this supporting these values. On the right-hand side, You'll see the current carrying capability curves as well, so plotting the time versus the load current. And this is very helpful because in certain applications, customers are primarily concerned with holding at a certain current level and making sure the contactor can support that. So this gives an idea of what can be supported. And again, many more details contained within our data sheets as well. So TE just recently released a new product within this family, right? Correct. This is our new, we call it our ECK50B and also our ECK100B versions. This is for the switching current 50 amps and 100 amps, but also has the bi-directional contact features as well in our newest series. So you'll see typical load ratings there at the current and voltage levels. These are also hermetically sealed with ceramic technology. So the same ceiling that we feature both in our 150 to 250 range. And there are also auxiliary contacts available in the 50 and 100 series as well. And again, on the right-hand side, you'll see the current carrying capability curve as well, time versus the load current, get an idea of what can be supported on the long-term current carrying capabilities. And again, these are all featured in our data sheets with a lot more technical parameters and specifications as well. So what kind of design concerns should we keep in mind when it comes to DC contactors? In our many years of experience within TE, we've accumulated a best practice question sheet that you'll see. You know, this covers the basics of what we've seen helping engineers design DC contactors into their applications. These are key questions and features that as an engineer, you know, we would encourage you to start with. As you reach out to us for any application support, we have field application engineers. These are some of the questions we would start with. You know, obviously there's a lot more details we can go into here. You know, maybe your engineers are doing something very application specific or something unique, you know, we can go over with them too. But this is just a, a starting point, you know, good questions to start with, whether it's, you know, how many poles or what's the max voltage or the max current carrying capability, you know, what certifications do you need for the contactors to have any specific UL ratings and so forth. So as we go through these questions, this will help us come together with the best DC contactor part number for, you know, each and every application that would be the best fit. And, you know, within TE, we're always developing our portfolio to assist with making a greener world, 
you know, empowering the future of e-mobility infrastructure, warehouse automation, and battery energy storage systems. And so we offer a unique technical proposition here. We have these technical standards, certifications for each and every application. We also have field application engineer support. Mauser is also great at supporting stocking and carrying inventory. So they're quick and easy to grab when you're looking for new designs and being able to get some test data very quickly. All right. So, John, TE Connectivity has a robust portfolio of DC industrial contactors, right? We do. You can see the many, many part numbers and configurations that you can pick for your application. So we've highlighted here, you know, whether it's the the switching current or the coil voltage, we have different coil voltage options depending on your design. Even in addition to this, we also have our higher power versions, our ECP, which we're not featuring here. But as you look into maybe some higher power versions in battery energy storage systems, that's also maybe another series that you can look for as well. Fantastic. Well, John, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you as well. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from TE Connectivity. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talk section of EE Journal. You can't miss it. It's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.